Hello once again, everyone. So, I wanted to take the time to talk a little bit about some of these stances that you will see, uh, particularly with rapier and dagger, but mostly with the sword alone, as you can easily translate this over. But basically, the three kind of main directions and why you might stand those certain ways. Because at first, the positions that you'll see do look somewhat outlandish, almost, um, unnatural feeling. And there is, to a certain degree, that is true. Um, certainly, if you come from something like a passing step background with whatever weapon, then learning to fight more linearly can be quite a challenge. Um, and not to mention as well, if you have other habits that you have formed due to whatever you spend your life doing, you may have to fight against certain things. Um, so let's just kind of briefly go over them and a little bit of discussion about them. And why you might choose to stand a certain way, etc. So, within rape, you're gonna see three main stances. Right? You're going to have rearward weighted, neutral weighted, and then the forward stance. Now, you're never going to see forward weighted unless it's on the end of a lunge, which is kind of like an unofficial fourth stance. We'll get into that again later. But, the basic idea behind these is it's all about reserving the important part of me, i.e. my central organs, provoking my opponent into attacking preferably a relatively narrow opening on me, um, so my head or my upper chest, as well as loading my back leg for either, depending upon what you're doing, a passing step, a lunge, or even just a kind of proto-lunge, so an accrescimento, which can still be powered with the back leg. Uh, so for example, like in Paladini. So let's go over a little bit about that. So. The first thing to take into account is going to be our normal stance, our neutral stance. You'll see this if you do something along the lines of military saber or small sword or what have you. Of course, modern sport fencing has a much more neutral sort of stance. And this in general, you can fight just fine from here. There's nothing saying that you cannot fight with the rapier and be a wonderful practitioner of it. And in fact, at times, I would even recommend moving into this. So the biggest thing that this is going to get you is your leg isn't quite as loaded as it can be and you are a little bit more forward um, in regards to your organs literally being closer to where all the actions of the sword are happening. However, what you're going to get out of it is you're going to get an increased amount of mobility and you're not going to be working as hard. Now what I mean by working as hard is even at my most practiced, holding this can still take a little bit from me. Right, My left leg's engaged, it's basically tensed this whole time. Um, and as such, it does kind of start to drain on you after a while. By just shifting forward just a little bit for a while, uh, certainly in regards to mobility, or times when I'm not needing to have that stance quite as strong, it's just fine. Uh, for example, let's, let's take uh, punching, for example. You can draw your power from the ground, right, or from your connecting leg. That doesn't mean you always have to have it glued to the ground, otherwise you have people shuffling toward each other. You've gotta pick it up and move it. Same sort of idea here. Certainly, you know, I want to fight here or here, but there are going to be times when it's better for me to stand more upright and sometimes even fight off of that because that's what's needed. Now, what I will recommend in regards to it is make sure you're following these basic tenets, i.e. the arm is still well extended ahead of me, right? And I always take the time to bring that arm out before pushing myself forward. My leg needs to be engaged. Don't get in the habit of, oh, I can just stand this way, but the leg isn't. Because important thing with this, right now my leg is ready to power that lunge. Right now it isn't. And it's a relatively minor shift, but when you're standing more 50-50, you're going to have to actively think about powering off of this as opposed to it being your only option. So, bear that in mind. Um, as well as, like I said, you're closer to the fight. My lead leg is now a little heavier because I've got a bit more weight on it, which means that slipping it out of the way is going to require just a little bit more active thinking on my part. Not something you can't do with practice, but these are things to consider with it. So, now we'll go ahead and move back into the rear stance, the more common stance you're gonna see with the right here. here. Now, you'll see more or less dramatic versions of this. Um, you'll see the toe turned outward, you'll see the hips really sucked in, you'll see some where it looks more like they're leaning back with the torso, some more profiled, some less profiled, all these are just fine. But the basic idea behind this is I'm standing as I was before, I'm going to load my leg, and turning it to the outside does allow me to load that a little better. I'm going to suck my hip back 
into place as well. I don't want this sticking out forward. I want to square up in relation to my target so that my body is here. Now, you'll hear people especially you know, say, oh, you should fight profiles when it comes to a thrusting weapon, and you should, but save the profile bit for when I'm doing something. Otherwise, I'm going to need that strength to fight on every possible line, because we haven't set the stage yet. Now, suck this back, slightly, you know, spine is erect, everything's back, my arm becomes nice and light, my foot becomes nice and light. From here, everything that's hovering in the danger zone, I can retract or extend quite easily. Anything that wants to hit me has to get past my tip, the middle of the sword, my guard, and then my arm, and then my other arm, or daggers, we're talking about the zone of dagger and offhand parries. That's a long distance for someone to come in, which lends me a lot of time to execute my counter. Now, tying back into that with the squared up nature of my hips, if I turn super profiled, I do get an, a linear sort of angle, and certainly, me being particularly skinny, this is nice, the problem with it, however, becomes that now I can apply energy really well that way, not as strong on this side. If I square up, though, it's very easy for me to apply energy to both sides. So this is why I advocate that. Now, this will also make uh, using offhand weapons a little easier. Now, the drawbacks of this are going to be, even at its most practiced, this stance is not terribly mobile. It's still quite mobile. And certainly, like I said, you can get pretty comfortable with this, but I'm really only going to be doing my lunge and then small steps. So like I said, I'll usually fight here. Uh, when it comes time to actually be doing actions, I will drop into this stance. But otherwise, I'll move a little bit more evenly weighted and then kind of allow myself to sink in preparation for my actions. A good time to do this would be when you are looking to find the sword or alternatively someone has found yours, etc. Um, if you followed the Wallerstein videos, a good way of thinking this is it's very much like the scales, right? Oh, it's buying time, let's get ready for buying time, etc. Now, the next one we're going to go over is the forward stance. This is probably the most dramatic one, uh, though we will also get into an even more dramatic one than that. The forward stance is going to be, this is the one you usually see in things like Fabris, etc., where I'm now bringing myself much more forward, my feet come a lot closer together, um, sometimes it'll almost look like they're standing upright, just hinging from the hip. Again, we'll get back to that in a minute. And the arm is almost always held extended. Now, the trick with doing this one is this is probably the most physically demanding, as I need to be able to keep my back straight, I need to have relatively flexible hammies, and I also need to be very on the ball when it comes to my sword. Um, if I stand like this with a lazy sword, with a loose arm, you're going to get poked in the face very easily. You need to make sure that your arm can support extended action out here. The way I achieve that is by keeping my core engaged and my back as straight as possible and letting my hips hinge away from me. Now, when it comes to forward stance, like I said, you do let your feet come closer together because they're no longer as important. With the rearward stance, I was using that kind of as a probe, right? Along with my hand, both of these can probe in different directions because I'm fighting from back here. With the forward stance, it's all about really emphasizing that middle bind work. I no longer need my foot out there to do its job. It's instead me faking with my head and using my arm to do it. Now the benefits of this, because really the drawbacks are pretty obvious. You're not very mobile. It's physically demanding on you. With, and even with a lot of practice, I mean, when I was first learning this, we spent probably close to half a year just working on things from the forward stance. And by the end of it, we were all very, very comfortable there. But it was a lot of work, and since I've been out of it for a while, getting back into really fighting out of there has been challenging. So it is a skill that you have to keep ready to go. Uh, but, I digress. The drawbacks are you're not terribly mobile, uh, your head is very, very exposed, and you have to be able to support yourself with the whole body. You really can't rely on just your arm strength or it's, gonna, it's not supported, right? Even at my laziest, when my arm's super tired, I can still hold myself up in neutral. I can still hold myself up in rearward because it can basically rest on me. And furthermore, I'm far away from the target. This is me being closer to the target. My arm is the only thing between me and their sword. Benefits, meanwhile, are going to be you get unparalleled control of that center line. So just for reference here, from here, you know, neutral stance or rearward stance, I can find the sword pretty well with just my fingertips. 
If I extend, I can find the slope pretty well with much more of my body. And certainly you'll see that with the arm extending, you'll see sometimes people incline themselves, basically moving into the forward stance almost from a rearward or neutral stance. And you'll even sometimes see the use of an accrescimento or something along those lines with the finding of the sword or sometimes with a beat attack. Um, so things along this line, again, kind of moving into a forward stance. By starting out here, you've already got that pressure. You are a square, just this brick that is very difficult to fight in the center line because I'm putting everything right there. Um, kind of tinfoil hats on moment. This is very similar to how some people interpret the position from 133 or the hinged hip posture. I personally agree with it in regards to if I'm going to play the central wedge game, yes, this is a very good stance to use for that. It gives me a ton of pressure here. And the nice thing about it is because the only thing really forward is either my arm or my head, if you're going to target me, it's going to again be in that relatively small area, which I'm apt and ready to protect. Now, these three stances, should you stick to one, should you move through all three, etc., it depends upon the action. Like I said, this one I find to be the most mobile, and also sometimes, you know, you're just not up to your best fight, you know? Sometimes you're fighting another system, so my mixed weapon conversation. When you need to adhere to the principles you know here, but they're not gonna stand and fight the way you want them to, right? Maybe they're a more mobile person. Maybe they're a person who's gonna cut at you. Maybe they're a person with a bigger sword. You want some mobility. You can still adhere to all your principles here. Alternatively, maybe you have the control, but you're a little bit worried about doubles or things along those lines. Then I'll go ahead and start moving into the rearward stance, right? This is going to allow me to extend and fight from really far away, literally, power my attacks and then return back to a place of safety, go for my leg, I can slip it easily, etc. If it comes to someone who's really going to fight in the wedge game where I can control them, yeah, forward stance is gonna be a big one for that. I especially like using the forward stance against people who are too used to letting their arms be close to them. So what I mean by this is, you can find the sword and do a lot of the blade actions with your arm in one pommel of your torso. And certainly there are some advantages to being able to then extend off of that. But I find, however, that time, that time from here to here is very easily exploited by just a stronger finding. So if I know that someone's gonna be lazy about that or alternatively if they are tired, then I will find the sword and move into the forward stance with it. Um, so this would be finding the sword with an accrescimento as well as moving in. And that's going to give me a ton of power this especially helps in regards to your counter thrusts. So I find the sword, they attempt to kabatsu and hit my face. I don't have to move all that much from my posture to get a very powerful sukunda. But all that is to say, these are kind of the ideas of things that, you know, what it, what it gets you. Because at first these look very silly. And don't get me wrong, they get sillier, you know. Um, for example, let's see here. I'll just use the saber in place of it. But for example, you will see in regards to two weapons, uh, specifically a dagger, but I forgot to grab a dagger, right? You will see things along the lines of like, you know, this sort of thing, though that's with cloak. You'll also see highly retracted positions with the right foot forward, or you'll see forward positions with the left foot forward. You'll see this sort of thing. You'll see a bunch of strangeness. But really, what it boils down to is, are you looking to play a narrow game or a wide game? What are you looking to emphasize in the enemy's targeting of you? What are you trying to conserve within yourself? You know, are you someone that can fight with the sword for a good while and so it's okay to expose your head? Or is it you're there to do a job? Is it I'm tired and I need to keep some distance? Or is it I'm being reserved and I'm letting the probe kind of do the work, right? Do I need mobility? Do I need solidness? Because you can't really have both all the time. But either way, bit of a rambly video that no one really asked for, but I wanted to kind of go over it because it was on my mind and hopefully that'll help some people out there in regards to playing with these three kind of different distances in regards to where your core and where your weight is settled. Um, but otherwise, thank you very much for watching. We'll go over some other techniques another time.